the decision to stay home at Rutgers, you kept talking about that yesterday. I'm from 15 minutes away from where I went, right? Yeah. Like, you did that, and then you had a guy who was a high school coach. Yeah. Right? First off, let's just get this straight. Kevin Dresser was a high school coach. Yeah. Steve Martin was a high school coach. You, you understand that, right? Yeah. And then, you know, obviously, Scott Goodell, he was a high school coach, right, yeah. in New Jersey. Uh, what was it? He was... Jackson Memorial. Jackson Memorial, right? So he brings Winston along with him, right? Yeah. He gets a lot of the top guys Winston was wrestling with at that, like, those high school years, 2013, 14. That was the guy, though. Scott yeah, Winston was the, was the first nationally number, two or three number one guy. Behind Jason Welch, I think. Was yeah. It? That was it. But he was, like, the guy, yeah. right? So... I remember you were then the guy. You were like yeah. the next coming of Scott Winston, right? And it took like took six years, right? Yeah. But you were the guy. So and then obviously Nick comes over from Penn State, and you guys just have like this really awesome year, right? Yeah. He, I think it almost like if they could have swapped the weights, where they used to go in different order, you could yeah. have been the first national champ. Maybe yeah. it would have been more fitting. Yeah. But I don't. It didn't matter to them. They, they wanted to win. They had two right. guys. You guys went two for two. It doesn't really matter to us at this point. It's every. Everything that happened is just a blessing. Like we're just trying to get more recruits from from it now, and just set ourselves in a in a spot in history where where we could only go up and stay up. And you, so you're a part of that. You are the guy. You're the face. Yeah. You're the face of the program. Thank you. Where do you go from here? Where do you go from here now? It's obviously RTC, and RTCs are trying to steal guys away. And yeah. there's there's pretty good. It's lucrative. You can yeah. get good money off RTCs. Heck yeah. Um, heck yeah. Just. Right now, just training at the RTC. I signed in May for a whole year to next May. Um, so it's training with the NGRTC, getting this knee as healthy as I can for now, doing PT as much as possible, where it's still healthy, taking days off in between to let myself heal. And, and then it's just back to work. My goal is to, uh, to win an Olympic gold. And uh, in my head, when I was done with NCAAs and I was evaluating everything, um, the, the kind of plan I had was to go through 2024. But right now, it's just going to be taking it day by day, by day with this uh, major injury. I just want to make sure I come back as strong as I can before, like, I make any other long-term commitments. Um, but yeah, I'm still really hungry to compete. I love the sport. I'm out here a month at the surgery, helping the kids as much as I can. I think it's pretty clear that I love to re love wrestling and I love to be around the, around the sport. So I'm gonna do everything I can to just get 100 percent and get back to the top level that I was at. Okay, I see another ACL scar. It looks like on the left, the ACL. Uh, this was actually like a minor scoping of, Is that my, all that was? of my bush sack, but I got an infection and I had to stay in the hospital. Are you serious? So that was like, you got staph? So uh, it wasn't staph, but it was like something I needed to pick IV for. They split me back open, sprayed it with like um, s something that... So that saline, you didn't lose your leg? sprayed it with saline. Yeah, so cleaned, you didn't lose your leg? Yeah. Cl cleaned it up and I was on a pick IV for like four nights. So like you just said, long-term commitments, uh, uh, 2024, yeah. right? I think we're in through 2024, mm -hmm. by the way, right? Is that our yeah. last? That's my. That's I think that's the plan. last one we're in through wrestling. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we're in plan. through 2024. Yeah, yeah. you know yeah, the situation. That that makes me. That's another deal. But okay, 2024. You're just going 2020 right now, and then maybe another quad. My, my plan right now is to get into coaching somewhere along the way, uh, like a transition in that in that middle period. Um, but right now the focus is just to get healthy and, com and compete, get back to practicing every day, get, get on a schedule of practice and lifting and getting better, maybe scheduling in some training camps. And then after this, probably next wrestling season, I'll make a maybe transition to start coaching. With 65 so, kilos, this, for 2020, you're trying yeah, to do 65 kilos. Yeah. It is not 74. No. Because you're, no. you're whereas like James is a more true tweener yeah. than you. No, if I stepped on the scale right now, I'd probably be like, very, very close to that seventy kilo weight class. So you're, you're sixty five all the way. Yeah, it's not even in question. No, I mean I'm sure it'll be easier than some of the guys have. Yeah, up. like James, he tries to cut to sixty five and yeah. he looks like death. Yeah. If you uh, saw him in twenty sixteen, he didn't look good. Yeah. And he didn't look good in, in the Iowa. Performance scene. kind of showed. Yeah. Well, yeah, it does. Okay. So like you had a year. I said that you had a year. It was a year. Yeah. I mean I don't know if you could have had much better of a year. Well, I mean not tearing your knee in yeah. the, the world team trials, but. From November, from November NCAs. to March, from November to April was a great, great little run. It was, it was great. Yeah. It was good. It, what a time to be alive if you're Anthony Ash and all, right? Yeah. You won Pan Ams. Um, what was that like wrestling in Madison Square Garden? What did you think of that event? Um, uh, for Beat the Streets? Yeah, Beat the Streets. Oh, uh, it was sweet. Like, kids ask me at the clinics all the time, like, what was it like wrestling there? It was, like, it was awesome, especially, like, I felt there was, like, a, a slight, like, 
like hesitation in my end just because um, it was a plus uh, three kilogram allowance at first. Are you serious? 70, the night before weigh in um, against James Green, who's the world team member at that weight class. So coming off a season at 149, like my original thought was like, I, I can't compete. Like, this is not fair. Like, let me try to like see what I can do. As like, I told them pretty honest with Jordan Burroughs reached out. I was pretty honest with him just about my weight and stuff. And he's like, hey, we'll do a one kilogram allowance. He's like, you know what? Like, whatever it is, let's just do it. I want to do it. I want to wrestle. I beat the streets. I've always went to this event in New York at Times Square when it was at Times Square as a kid. Like, I don't care what the allowance is. Tell them. And so like it went from me hesitating to just kind of like jumping all in. And I never looked back. I, I lost the match eight four, but it was such a great experience. I mean, um, just like being at on the main platform of wrestling like yeah at the NCAAs you are as well but this was like an event where like kind of feels like the wrestling world stops and everyone watches um, it's like the only event going on at that time and you're in Madison Square Garden uh, I don't know I just felt like kind of like a boxer on like his uh, on a big fight night on a big fight card and it felt really cool um, I just wish I was able to come out on top but even losing 8-4 I felt like I won, a, won some little battles and there I was down 8-0 and persevered to come back at the end even though I didn't come all the way back it's like uh I just like showed another little thing about my character like you can't never you never could give up you got to be super gritty at all times and uh just because you're down eight nothing doesn't mean you hang your head and you give in and you throw in the towel you fight to the very end till the rest blowing the whistle tapping you to get off which brings me to my favorite Anthony Ash not moment ever yeah. where I thought you were a psychopath uh, the Dean Heil match in the Constellation 2015 NCAA tournament. Yeah. You had a torn hamstring. hamstring. And you're out there going after Dean Heil. Yeah. And he's kind of trying to fend you off, right? And you're, dude, you were, you couldn't, you barely walk. You actually <laughs> took him down with a torn hamstring. Yeah. Blew my mind. Yeah. The grittiness of that. Yeah. Why don't you give up in that situation? What What's going through your mind in that situation? In that moment, like, I, I just beat Randy Cruz to go to the place for the, my freshman season. And I'm thinking, I'm coming back for third place. Like, I lost to Mitchell Port, and I was, I, he was one of your guys, probably Edinburgh guy. Um, but just, I wasn't totally confident to win the NCAA title that year. When I lost to him, it wasn't like a, wasn't like a huge, like, heartbreaker moment. And that was the moment I realized, okay, like, all right, I wasn't that, I wasn't confident enough to win this NCAA title this year. But I'm coming back for third. Like, I was hungry to place high. And I had a good match with Randy Cruz. I won, and then I'm wrestling versus Dean Heil. It was a competitive match, but I got he got a shot, and I tried to do a split, like which I never do, and he took my, my hamstring gave out, and I was just thinking the whole time, like I gotta finish this match, like like I don't want to take eighth, like like I love that Anthony Pratty placed the year before, and he took eighth for us for Rutgers, but I was like I don't I don't want to take eighth, like Anthony Pratty took eighth, like we need to get better, like I need to take better than eighth, like I need to keep, like we need to improve, and like it was kind of already settling, like my hamstring screwed, like I need to forfeit out of the tournament, that's why I was having those thoughts. But uh, that's what I was thinking. I was like, you know what, like, finish this match out hard. Like, finish like a warrior. And, like, if it's too hard to finish after this, like, you're done. Like, you're an All-American. Just, like, finish this match out. I remember our, looking at my coaches. Like, Don, he's, like, a really tough guy. And he's, like, he's like trying to tell me to stop. He, like, like, has a towel in his hand. Like, that's going to do something. I was just like, chill out. Like, it's, like, 30 seconds left at this point. If like, there's something I could show my kids, <laughs> if I was like, hey, you want to see how tough somebody is? Like, two kids, two yeah. sons? I'd show them that. Yeah. I'm like, this is what people do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what people do. Yeah. Right? It's just gritty and tough. You don't win. You take eighth. We get it. But, like, you're out there on a bad wheel, like, like worse than what you got here right now yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Right? It's torn. It's rolled up into your leg. And, yeah. dude, it was obvious. You yeah. you were limping so bad. Yeah. I thought it was your knee, though. Like, I but was it was like, your hamstring. It was, so, it was so painful. I was like, my knee was giving, like, my hamstring wasn't holding up for when I was stepping, so I was giving out. But um, I was just thinking, like, how can I attack? And then I try to push off it, couldn't. Then I was just like finding a way to fall into like a knee pull single and I got like a takedown. You took him down. And I was just like, holy shit, maybe I could win. <laughs> <laughs> I love it.